Hi, I'm Stuart from Mr. Feed Edworks. Welcome to the next video. So in today's video, I'm going to make a video focusing on vertical welding. And I'm going to show a little trick that I found to make things a bit easier. So let's get into this. Okay, before we actually get into the welding process, what I'm going to do first is talk a little bit about the equipment that I've got here, because that is the first thing. You need to have the right gear for the job. It's just going to make your life so much easier, honestly. So. The gas that I'm using here is oxygen and acetylene. So this bottle here, that's oxygen, that's a size E. And this bottle here, that's acetylene and that's a size K. Now these, these are on hire from BOC. So you have to pay obviously a rental charge for those so you never actually own the cylinders itself. Um, and then attached to the acetylene, we have our acetylene regulator that's a single stage 1.5 bar and from the regulator we have our flashback arrester so if you get any flame that come comes down the tube it can't go back into the cylinder and uh singe your eyebrows or worse <laughs> probably a lot worse <laughs> um and then on the oxygen oxygen cylinder we have um i'm actually fact i've got a multi-stage oxygen regulator on this one um, and here's a single stage one here so you can see the difference it's a it's a little bit bigger and it's got this extra extra section on the back there which you don't get with the single stage um, and that is a four bar make sure you've got the four bar not the ten bar um, now in an ideal weld you want both your regulators to be multi-stage you just get a more consistent flame. The single stage regulators, they just need to work twice as hard because they're dealing with the pressure coming from the cylinder. They need to they need to deal with that and then they need to deal with setting a steady flow. Um, so the multi-stage one gets a more consistent flame, but they are a bit more money and they are a bit heavier as well, which makes life a little bit harder when you're, you know, lumping these around the roof all day. But, um, you know, if you want a nice flame, it's, it's worth investing in. Now then, from that, we have our hoses. I have actually 10 metre hoses, which makes my life so much easier, especially if I'm working on something quite low. I can generally leave this, the, the bottles on the ground and just take the gun up so I haven't got to keep lumping them up and down on the scaffold. And you just don't, you don't have to move them around as much. It's just, it just makes life so much easier in my opinion so that's 10 meter hoses and then from the hose we have a modulo torch which looks something like this and i'm using i'm still going to focus um it's a number three no, it's not gonna focus it's a number three nipple that i use and i get some people have been asking me where i get my where i get my nipples from um, and I, I get them from a company called the Welders Warehouse and I just find them good quality and that's actually where I got this um, Modelo torch from as well and they do sell some pretty decent welding complete gas kits on there as well so definitely um, worth taking a look right then so now we've talked about what we're going to be using to actually weld the lead oh oh yeah and don't forget your bottle key to actually um, turn the bottles on so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to zero the gauges just going to open the gas lines and get all the gas out so that's that done that's all the gas out of there what i'm going to do next is turn these on you don't actually need the bottle key for the acetone you used to have to but they changed it now it's like a twisty thing we turn that on there and turn the oxygen on. Right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my pressure to 0.4 bar. As I turn this, you'll see that gauge swing round. This gauge here tells, tells me how much gas I've got in the cylinder. So it goes just creeping up now. Do that to 0.4 there just make sure they are actually still closed yep I'm gonna do now is do the same with the oxygen set at 0.4 so 
So again, that one there, that's telling me how much gas I've got in the cylinder. And this one here is telling me the pressure. So that's it, so that's now set at 0.4. Right, so now we've done all that, now we're ready to start welding. Right, okay, so I've just made this up for demonstration purposes. Just got my two pieces of lead together, I'm gonna do a vertical weld. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna lap that. I'm just gonna lap it by about 25 mil. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut some sticks off just off the, off the roll. Um, I like mine relatively thin, especially for vertical. Just find it a bit easier. You only, you only deal with like small bits dropping off the stick at one time then. And also the fact that is the more lead it's going to release in one go. So just cut a couple of sticks off. Just to be sure, because we've got enough. Right, so now that's done, I'm just going to straighten them out. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to shape up these. Then that, now that is not actually essential, but it, to be honest, it does make life a bit easier. It's worth doing. But actually, on the real world, um, don't really clean the sticks up that much, to be honest. So I'm actually going to be wearing an FFP3 mask as well, which just takes out the toxic fumes. And some people say, you know, you're outside and stuff. Yeah, you are, but generally you're right on top of the flame, so you're just breathing it all straight in. So it's, it's worth getting an FFP3 mask. And also, really, you should be wearing goggles as well. Right, light the gas now. Light the acetylene first. Just a little bit. Might take a while to come through. Move straight away. Now we're going to introduce the oxygen. As I do that, you'll see the flame change. And you see, I've just got that sort of a quite bright, white, shiny ball. That's what we're looking for. We don't want it too pointy. We're going to increase it a little bit. That should be about right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a little tack just to keep, just, just to steady things up. Normally, you'd have something supporting this lead, but because I've just made this, there's, um, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's going to make it a little bit more harder, so that should be okay. Right, so, the trick that I've found of doing this, to make it easier, rather than just coming 
straight up from the bottom. What I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to come down from the top with a stick. Do now is I'm gonna lower the flame because I know that's too hot. So I'll give it some oxygen and makes the flame get big like that. Then reduce the acetylene. And we're just gonna test it to see what that's like. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb back up with a stick again from the bottom, adding the strength. So at the moment, although that is welded. Um, it's not very strong and when the lead moves there's a good chance that it could come apart so we're going to make it nice and strong on the stick so I've only used half of one. <laughs> I've, got about, I've got about three and a half left over there yet.
Yeah, that is it. That is the easiest way that I've found welding vertical. I mean, obviously, if you can, even easier would be give it more of a lap and cut that back at a 45 degree angle. Um, but in this case, I just wanted to show to show that one there because um, sometimes you do come across that. So um, yeah, so that's that one done. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can check me out on Instagram at SFB Leadworks. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hopefully, catch you in the next. Cheers.